Okay, let's try to learn about the key characteristics of cloud computing. Going clockwise, we got on-demand self-service, broad network access, resource pooling, rapid elasticity, and measured service. Although they are pretty much in English and self-explanatory, let's go through them one by one. The first one, on-demand self-service. It means that you should be able to create services, resources, whenever you want it. Customer can select the resources whenever they want it with the help of a self-service provisioning portal. You can access the resources in the cloud in the middle of the night or during the business day from anywhere. You can create the resource, you can deprovision the resource whenever you want it. A rapid elasticity, and I call it as the most attractive features of cloud computing. As the word itself says, it is elastic in nature. That means that when there is certain load on the servers and it exceeds the threshold, it can increase its capacity automatically. Let me try to explain that with an example. I'm sure all of us do e-commerce shopping on Amazon.com or other e-commerce websites. Let's say that the infrastructure that they have is something that looks like the one in the picture. The white colored box is load balancer and the VMs are the web servers. So when the traffic hits the web servers, it will hit through the load balancer. Now, during regular times, when there is no sale period, right? No sale is going on, the traffic will be regular, that means is the CPU utilization on these servers will be normal, and the network utilization will also be normal, the disk utilization will also be normal, and that's a fair situation. Now, Amazon says that there's a sale from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. What's going to happen is people like you and me who would like to you know, cut down on costs and then also save money, maybe you want to give gifts to people, so we will do the shopping at that time because we want to save money. And just like you and me, there are thousands and thousands of people who will be connecting to Amazon servers right at that time. What's going to happen to these servers? The CPU utilization of these servers go above a certain number. The network utilization also goes right on the top. The disk utilization goes beyond its capacity. That means these servers who were running at let's say 30 to 40 percent utilization, now they are close to 80 percent utilization. And when that happens, the services or the web services will be denied to the users users will feel latency in the way they access the applications etc and you might have already noticed this uh, with your experience by now when you try to access web apps during sale period it's very slow and so that's primarily because these servers are not able to handle that amount of load because there's millions and millions that are being uh, traffic that's being bombarded to these load balancers and they cannot take the load with rapid elasticity this whole setup detects the threshold that if the CPU goes above a certain number, then new servers can automatically be created. Isn't that great? So let's say if, if the CPU goes above um, 80%, I can write a rule there saying that if that happens, then create another server. So instead of five servers behind the load balancers, I will have six. So the load will be distributed among six instead of five. You can also have step scaling written there and then you say that if CPU goes about 90, create two servers. Create CPU goes about 95%, create three servers. So that's scaling out. So you are scaling out and creating new servers based on demand. And when the sale is over at 11 o'clock, you may want to cut down on what was provisioned. So whatever servers were created because of heavy utilization will be terminated, will be killed. So that way you save money right you don't have to keep them alive so you are scaling out based on demand and now that there is no demand after level o'clock you are scaling in this whole concept is called horizontal scaling when you scale out and scale in you also have something called a vertical scaling a vertical scaling is when you shut down the server increase the memory from 4 gb to 6 gb or 8 gb increase the number of CPUs from two, two CPUs to four CPUs and power the machine on. So increasing the computing power of that machine is called vertical scaling, whereas provisioning new servers in that load set is called as 
horizontal scaling. This is called as rapid elasticity. The third key characteristic is called as measured service. A measured service is about measuring and getting the right bill. That means that at the end of the month, when you get an invoice, you must get a detailed description of how much is your bill and why did you get it? How many servers were you running over a period of time? And how in, and in which geographical locations were they hosted? So you get a detailed invoices and then a detailed description of how much is the bill and, and uh, where the servers are provisioned. Resource pooling is about sharing the resources with the physical server. Let's take uh, an example of cab services. So if you want to get an Uber cab, you have two options. Either you go for an Uber pool or you go for a share cab. When you go to share cab, your costs are significantly less. You can get a car of your own if you want, but your bills will be higher in that case. In cloud, you can create virtual machines. That means your resources will be provisioned from a physical server. One of the physical server will be giving you memory and CPU to the virtual box. Keep in mind that there could be other virtual machines sitting on the same physical box and those virtual machines can be owned by other customers, right? So customer A and customer B can have their resources on the same physical host, but they're totally isolated. So there is no way that somebody can get in from machine A to machine B just because they are sitting on the same physical box, right? So you can create physical boxes in the cloud as well if you want. So virtualization is the backbone of cloud computing. Yes, that's, that's taken, but you can create physical boxes in the cloud. So resource pooling is about sharing resources with other tenants. Other tenants is like other customers. So multi-tenancy is a behavior where you will have multiple virtual machines sitting on the same physical host. Broad network access is where you try to access the services from anywhere and then the cloud provider must also be available in various geographical locations. You can access the, those resources from any network, any time, it could be morning or evening, and from any geographical location, as long as you have two things, internet and a device that has um, a, a compatible browser, that's all. So these are the five key characteristics of, these are the five key characteristics of cloud computing. In the next chapter, we'll learn about Gartner's magic quadrant. So we'll see about the market share that various cloud providers have.